So we have the Anatoly Kotov, the head of the International Department of the Foundation, and Vadim Privashev. He is responsible for the popular anti-crisis management, youth policy, and sports. He is running these. Hello, Vadim. Hello. Please, the journalists who are joining us, feel free to write your questions in the chat box. If you want to take the floor and ask your question using your voice, we will be able to do that, and you will be able to voice your question personally. And without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Alexander Peek, and Alexander, the floor is yours. Dear friends, dear colleagues, attending journalists, I'm pleased to welcome all of you here today. We will have a fairly content-rich press conference today. We will touch upon a great many topics with respect to the events in sports, in Belarus particularly, uh, matters of sanctions adopted against the Belarusian sport, and we will talk and discuss uh, with Alexandra Gerasimenia our new status. We will discuss uh, the criminal probes launched with respect to myself and Alexandra Gerasimenia for absolutely clear political reasons. Over the past six months, the Belarusian Sports Solidarity Foundation and the Free Athletes of Belarus have become probably one of the most important engines in the movement uh, for freedom in the movement to defend the Belarusians' rights, in, in the fight for these rights. At this backdrop, we have had a lot of important achievements, events that are interesting for the international community. Uh, these include the sanctions of the International Olympic Committee against the NOC of Belarus for systemic violations of athletes' rights. It's uh, big sports events that were transferred, moved from Belarus, Belarus is no longer going to host the uh, IIHF World Ice Hockey Championship 2021 and the launch of the Healthy Lifestyle Campaign. Uh, miraculously, the start of the national campaign that encourages all Belarusians uh, to avoid using alcohol and tobacco, to abandon their bad habits, to go outdoors and do sports, the launch of the Healthy Lifestyle Campaign uh, has initiated the so-called investigative committee the so-called uh, illegitimate authorities to launch a criminal probe, initiate criminal cases against me and Alexandra Gerstemenia for damaging the national security of Belarus. However, we take this uh, with a great deal of irony. Essentially, we see very well what kind of prospects new Belarus is going to face. We understand that uh, the developments are coming rather sooner than later. So we're building good, big plans for when this is over. Today, me and my colleagues believe that a number of measures uh, with regard to the NOC, National Olympic Committee of Belarus and the sports authorities of Belarus uh, must be taken because initiating these criminal cases is basically pressure against us as uh, members of the Olympic movement, as the members, as the representatives of a good many uh, free athletes in Belarus. So we are in the stage of preparing the relevant application to the appeal to the national uh, to the International Olympic Committee. Now I'd like to give uh, the floor to the head of Belarusian Sports Solidarity Foundation, to Alexandra Gerasimina. She will provide a comment on her side. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, rather. I would like to comment on our criminal cases. By the way, I've even recorded the accurate uh, wording of the article, instigation to commit other actions aimed at harming the national security of the Republic of Belarus committed using the mass media or the internet. That's a very interesting wording. That's a very interesting article uh, that we're charged for. Uh, it's complete, this accusation is completely illegal because uh, the people, particularly uh, Lukashenko and his lackeys, uh, have uh, captured power uh, since August 2020 and are holding to this power illegally. Ergo, all the criminal cases that are initiated right now are completely illegal and uh, illegitimate. We 
to understand that the outcomes or the the the, uh, the fact that this uh, these uh, criminal cases were launched is the tribute uh, to achievements of the of the foundation. What we have done, the moving the IIHF World Ice Hockey Championship, the Pentathlon Championship was also moved from Belarus. The Futsal European U19 Football Championship uh, for girls has been canceled. Uh, these are the achievements uh, of the foundation. Some sanctions were also passed thanks to the activities of the foundation. The foundation was collecting the materials was producing the necessary appeals and statements for the International Olympic Committee. And ultimately the IOC did uh, apply sanctions to the National Olympic Committee of Belarus. I believe this was yet another reason for the authorities uh, to, to, to press charges against us as individuals. However, we clearly understand that essentially this is a kind of a response to the International Olympic Committee it's a kind of a slap on the face uh, uh, to, to, to them uh, through us, we being the intermediaries in this. So essentially the foundation was definitely created not to destroy. We do not seek to destroy as our governments would be believes. Uh, the objective of the foundation was to help athletes, victims of the government's arbitrary actions, repressions, athletes, sports officials, athletes that were kicked off the national team and uh, that are forced to uh, prepare for the Olympics uh, themselves on their own. Uh, more than 130,000 euros was collected. Uh, the foundation has allocated over 130,000 euros you know, to provide financial assistance to repressed athletes, managers, and sports officials. As you remember, back in March, we launched uh, the Marathon for Freedom, a major uh, initiative where one and a half thousand people participated from uh, 45 countries. We do not intend to stop there. The foundation will keep working. At this point, we're working to move the uh, cycling, European cycling championship out of Belarus. We will dwell on this a bit later on. As for the criminal cases launched against us, well, we, we will definitely not challenge them because they're completely baseless and they're illegitimate. Uh, instead of that, I uh, put up my medal, the 2012 World Cup gold medal, 50 meter freestyle. I decided to put it up for auction. I said that uh, that medal, I was completely convinced that I'm going to win it. Uh, I was uh, completely sure that I was going to win. I set the national record and I, I obviously I, I won the gold medal back then. And symbolically, uh, the World Championship gold uh, for the peace in Belarus, Mira Demira in Russian. And the, the medal has a black ribbon. And I would like to support with this auction lot, I would like to support all Belarusians uh, who have been reprised. Particularly the athletes that have been kicked off the national team or impressed against or blackmailed. Uh, I would like to support uh, all the Belarusians and say that the confidence in success, the faith in victory is already 90% of success. Belarusians should not be upset, should not be despaired, should not be depressed about stuff that's going on. Please make sure you engage into our healthy lifestyle project and definitely we're going to prevail. We're going to win. That's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vadim. You know, have the floor. Yes. Good afternoon, once again, everyone. As for the uh, cycling championship that was moved out of Belarus, uh, the BSSF, together with the National Anti-Crisis Management and AM, we started working. The first reaction uh, of the European cycling community, particularly the president of the Federation, uh, Enrico de la Casa, he refused to move uh, it out of Belarus. Uh, well, uh, we would like to exp express our indignation at the refusal of the president of the European Cycling Union 
Miss Enrique de la Casa to move the European Track Cycling Championship out of Belarus. Uh, this is, uh, I would like to know that on the 27th of January, 2021, 29 ministers of sports and uh, persons responsible for, for sport in the European Union countries, they spoke in support of restricting the holding of major events, sports events in countries where human rights are grossly violated. Uh, in their appeal to Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth at the European, uh, at the European Commission. Uh, the document also contains a reference to the situation in Belarus where gross violations of human rights have been repeatedly identified according and irrefutably proven by the OSCE rapporteur. Uh, two stages have been run in that campaign. The first thing that we did on uh, February the 3rd, we, first, uh, we sent the first letter to the UEC, to the uh, European Cycling Union, the French abbreviation UEC, it was moved, uh, we filed it uh, on the 3rd of February as, as stated. On the 9th of February, a similar appeal was made by 25, 25 MEPs. According to our information, the UEC board uh, considered this application, but they referred to the fact that there were only 25 Parliamentaries, uh, members of European Parliament, only tw 25 signatories, uh, they did this, decided to refuse due to the small number of signatories. Uh, our further actions uh, were like this. On March the 17th, we sent our second appeal to the European Cycling Union. Uh, Mr. Uh, Enrico de la Casa was already in power. He was newly elected. Uh, was elected in early March. On March the 25th, uh, we got no response and we appealed uh, to the national federations uh, uh, urging to support our initiative and uh, have them speak out uh, their opinion as to what's going on in Belarus. Uh, the next day, on the 26th of March, we received an official response to our letter uh, signed by the president of the European, European Cycling Union, Mr. Enrique de la Casa. And he says that uh, that letter said that uh, everything is going to remain as it was. Uh, the tournament was not going to be moved uh, from Belarus. The contract has been signed, and the event is supposed to be held on June 23rd, 27th in Minsk. The UEC also has no intention of rescheduling or postponing uh, the tournament because uh, it cares about athletes uh, who faced a shortage of starts in the run-up to the Tokyo Games due to the pandemic. The training opportunities were limited. Uh, cycling competitions have issues uh, with mass competitions. The first stage of the Nations Cup or the Cup of the Nations in the UK never took place because of the pandemic. Interestingly, there's also a reference that uh, uh, the Commission of the Athletes uh, of the National Olympic Committee of Belarus uh, sent uh, its appeal to the IOC, where they encouraged uh, the International Olympic, Olympic Committee to allow uh, the participation uh, under the national flag of Belarus. There are references made that uh, the previously previous statements of IOC, previous reasons for, uh, for uh, sanctions have been eliminated in Belarus. And it's kind of like, in general, all the issues pertaining to the discrimination of athletes have uh, allegedly been resolved, uh, are no longer there. Also, there was a reference in that letter of athletes uh, that the situation with COVID pandemic, as the European Federation believes, uh, looks much better in Belarus uh, compared to other European countries. Well, all in all, uh, this uh, standpoint, the stance, uh, is only the reason for indignation on our part. We fail to understand uh, the reasons uh, for which this decision has been taken. Everyone who is aware and understands what's going on in Belarus and in Belarus and sports, particularly, all the changes that uh, have been happening kind of to, to resolve the issues that were the reasons for sanctions. Uh, well, these changes or these attempts uh, to remedy the situation have been purely cosmetic. They have not changed the situation essentially. 
In the most recent decision by the Olympic Committee, International Olympic Committee, they did not uh, uh, recognize the election of Viktor Lukashenko as the president of the north of Belarus. All the sanctions stay. And uh, this means, uh, this goes to say that there have been no positive changes identified uh, as yet. The second cause for our miss for, for, for lack of understanding, or what we fail to understand, is that UEC claims that they they defend the athletes' right, and they make a uh, they refer to that uh, in their in their response to our letter. They end up completely disrespecting the, the, the rights of Belarusian athletes that are facing discrimination. And uh, this response by the UEC also jeopardizes uh, the participants uh, of the tournaments that will come to Belarus and will, will also face uh, issues. For the COVID situation, it's quite problematic to discuss it at this point because the statistics cited by the Belarusian Ministry of Healthcare, well, nobody trusts it. Well, nobody trusts it uh, at all. And uh, saying that the situation with COVID in Belarus is much better than in any other European country, well, it's ridiculous, in my viewpoint. In principle, uh, if I were to summarize, I should say that uh, the arguments by the UEC completely discredit, uh, completely discredit the Union It's basically, it uh, causes only lack of understanding and lack of consistency in, in what they do. In this respect, I would like to say this: in principle, the signing of the contract was signing. Uh, the, the, the signing of the contract was happening after the first round of sanctions imposed by the IOC against Belarus, against against the IOC of the, against the NOC of Belarus, and after the signing of that contract. One of the members of the Board of Trustees, uh, the director of Minsk Cycling Club, who was summarizing the previous season uh, to, in an interview to the media, he was kind of uh, parading this uh, achievement. Even after the sanctions uh, for political reasons by the IOC, we still got the contract. So this whole situation at the backdrop of what's happening in the country, the events in the country and the downward trend thereof, we see that the situation is only growing worse day in, day out. The people are not simply punished with fines, administrative responsibility. For a number of violations, so-called violations, completely trumped up charges that we have no mistake of seeing through, we just, fail to understand. Let me give you a simple example. With the ribbons on car antennae, when people, the people on the car radio antennas, if people are bearing white, red, white labels and they are in prison for 30 days because of that ribbon, well, that's uh, that says it all. We do not intend to sit idle. Uh, the things we've done recently is we've sent uh, We've ensured more than 300 appeals by individuals to the MEPs. We've also sent a letter to the partners uh, of the European uh, Cycling Union, uh, the, to TISO, particularly the sponsor. The TISO have done the right thing uh, when they were deciding to cancel the sponsorship for the ice hockey championship. Uh, they supported uh, moving that tour tournament out of Belarus. TISO is the supplier of the equipment to this tournament. And we've also uh, reached out to the European Broadcasting Union. They're also they're a partner of both uh, UEC, particularly UEC, and they have the right uh, to, uh, they own the broadcast rights uh, of the cycling championship. So that's the letter of sent. Uh, that's basically the summary of what we have done uh, as of today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alexandra Pekin, you have the floor again.
uh, talk of talk about the the project, the healthy lifestyle. Yeah, let's talk positivity a bit. Apart from uh, the tournaments moved out of the country, which we believe is a very uh, is, is is not really a good thing. It's it's the only response to the uh, bad situation that is in Belarus today. Apart from that, uh, we have some positive news. On April the 1st, the Belarusian Sports Solidarity Foundation launched a national campaign, an all national campaign uh, to promote healthy lifestyle, uh, encouraging all Belarusians to abandon their bad habits. The thing is, over the past 26 years, uh, during the rule of Alexander Lukashenko, the Belarusians, uh, uh, Bel Belarus as a country, started ranking number one or top ranks uh, in global ratings uh, for alcohol and uh, tobacco consumption per capita. In one of the ratings, uh, I think for 2020, Belarus was ranking first in alcohol consumption per capita. From our viewpoint, uh, this policy, uh, well, getting the nation drunk and smoking, it was, uh, it was completely purposeful. The government did that on purpose because a person who is intoxicated, who is uh, subjected to bad habits, uh, they're easily manageable. They're easily convertible to slaves of the system, which basically is what we see today. So the Belarusian Sports Solidarity Foundation decided to handle this matter, to take care of the health uh, of Belarusians. More than 100 prominent Belarusian athletes uh, have uh, become members of this campaign. This all national campaign offers trainings, master classes to Belarusians, unique workouts, unique trainings uh, for a healthy lifestyle and advisory services as well. This campaign has been running for almost a week now. We see amazing results, huge involvement on the part of the population. Uh, we see a very positive reaction, positive response on the part of our compatriots. And we believe that it is the campaign, it is the movement, the healthy lifestyle movement that the Belarusians were lacking before. This is also a way to uh, speak out as citizens, to manifest their state, uh, uh, their, their citizens' positions, uh, uh, refusing to take alcohol, tobacco, and do sports, to engage into sports. We understand that excise duties uh, from alcohol and tobacco sales are a significant replenishment source uh, for the Belarusian regime's budget. So Belarusians are indeed skipping smoking, they're skipping uh, drinking, and they're engaging into this healthy lifestyle movement. That's basically in a nutshell, uh, if you will uh, be able to follow this uh, in more details on, on our social media. Right, thank you. And uh, Anatoly Kodona has the, has the floor, uh, NAM representative. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, to support uh, the event uh, that Alexander has just mentioned, uh, the promotion of healthy lifestyle campaign, I mean, we would like, as a national anti-crisis management team, to highlight an important issue, a very important issue that uh, Alexander Pekin here has uh, touched upon. It's tobacco smoking in Belarus. Uh, statistically, currently in Belarus, each citizen uh, smokes uh, one and a half packs of cigarettes. Uh, that's including the infants, every every single soul, every single inhabitant of Belarus. Uh, so this issue has to be fought. This, this problem has to be fought. And the healthy lifestyle is the right choice for everyone. But let us not condemn out and out, those people who make a different choice. In this case, uh, the only way we can act is uh, lead, leading by example and uh, convincing people of the right of the right way. But the anti-tobacco -tobacco campaign should be uh, focusing on the following facts. The annual budget income for Belarus it's uh, 30, 31 million dollars made on ex uh, from excise duties. Those millions of dollars are spent in particular uh, to fight the protests these days. 
the companies that are producing cigarettes there have been cases of the workforce rights violated violations it's uh, not as uh, huge a case as with the uh, belarusian potassium company belarus kali uh, but uh, yeah the, the situation at tobacco factories leaves much to be desired pretty much uh, like countrywide like in any other place countrywide among other things uh, Bad habits uh, is uh, illegal tobacco sales is what uh, the uh, Europeans, the Euro European authorities are fighting. Just a brief example, the among, uh, about 5 million units of tobacco uh, products uh, of illegal uh, origin have been confiscated uh, on the European Union borders. This is huge volume. Uh, the, that was the Belarusian border with the European Union. So these four factors that I've mentioned, huge amount of confiscated illicit goods, uh, well, and other points, uh, these are the reasons for us to speak out and address uh, the top tobacco manufacturers, tobacco product manufacturers, to encourage them to reconsider uh, the licensing policy uh, for production making tobacco products in Belarus because the, the profits from that activity are used to repress the, pro, uh, the, the protest. And most importantly, there is a serious issue of illegal trade, excise duty free, that is uh, causing triple damage. First of all, it's the damage to people's health. Secondly, this money is not uh, earned uh, by the state budget and the, this uh, money is not earned uh, by the tobacco producing in the factories. For this reason, the NAM reached out to, to the tobacco manufacturers who have licensed manufactured uh, manufacturing in Belarus to encourage them to reconsider their licensing policy with respect uh, to uh, this uh, manufacturing of these products in Belarus. Of course, I would like to say, uh, I would like to raise the question of full abandoning of uh, cooperation, but uh, tobacco smoking is basically a big uh, example uh, to try to convince people to abandon this bad habit of smoking. So the documents have been sent uh, to the top tobacco companies. Once again, I would like to invite everyone to join the Healthy Lifestyle Campaign uh, launched by the BSSF. Uh, being healthy is indeed great. So let's uh, switch to the Q&A session. Just a reminder to the journalists, uh, you can type your questions in the chat box. You can uh, raise your hand in Zoom and ask to have the floor. Uh, the first question is uh, from Lukas Katilius, uh, TV3.LT, uh, Lithuania. It's a question to Alexander Yelisimenia. Uh, has the president, Alexander Lukashenko, reached out to you personally or to your team? Uh, how strongly is he involved uh, with launching the criminal case and is, uh, how strongly he is involved right now with its development? Alexandra, could, we, could you unmute, unmute, unmute your mic? Yeah, now you, now you can. Okay. Thank you for the question, Lucas. Oh, definitely, it's impossible to say uh, definitively how strongly Lukashenko is involved in the process, but I believe that was uh, kind of a vendetta, kind of a revenge, because uh, the foundation didn't just initiate uh, the sanctions adopted by the IOC and having the international competitions canceled and moved from Belarus. It was also his removal from the post of the NOC president. That's a painful blow for him because uh, we know that the president in the country can only be one. The second president was the National Olympic Committee president. And for us, it's also symbolic that he's no longer president. 
Well, he, he, he left his one presidential post. Hopefully, we will all take efforts, we will all make efforts, uh, combine our efforts uh, to remove him from this second presidential position as president of the country. I believe that all the criminal cases are launched uh, with his consent, with his uh, unspoken yes. As for his uh, reaching out to us, definitely not, with only hints, with only F words, like uh, branch offices, Lithuanian branch offices. Uh, no, he never reached out personally to me or, or the foundation. I, I, I'd like to elaborate, if I may. Uh, I will uh, correct uh, Mr. Katilius' question. Lukashenko is not the president for us. Uh, so his appeal to us would not have changed much. Well, uh, today he is just an individual that usurped power with a group of other people. So his comment or his attitude towards us, well, this, this is a completely neutral moment to us. We don't really care, bottom line. Okay, thank you. The next question from Valery Darokhin. From Telegraph BY. Is the IOC, has the IOC been informed about the criminal probe launched by the Belarusian authorities? Is there a response on the part of IOC? Uh, when are we supposed to look forward to it if it's not there yet? Well, right now, right now, the IOC has not been officially informed. Uh, we are preparing the application as we speak. Uh, I believe uh, by the end of this week, we will file uh, an official statement uh, to the um, IOC about these criminal cases. But I believe that the IOC staff members have already been informed about this uh, from the media. Uh, inside the games and other international editions have already published the news uh, article uh, saying that the criminal cases have been initiated against uh, myself and Alexandra. So the IOC officials are uh, more than aware of the situation, but the official statement will be sent in the coming two or three days. Okay, thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, just a reminder to you, uh, feel free to type your questions into the chat box or ask to have the floor. I, I see one question. Just one second, it's in English, let me copy paste it to our interpreter, we'll get it translated. The question is from Jonathan Crane from Deutsche Welle. He would like uh, to ask a couple of questions. Just one second, bear with me. Right, the translation is in. Uh, what is the BSSF's next move in trying to get uh, the European Track Championships uh, moved out from Belarus? Okay, so what is the next move uh, by BSSF to, uh, to try to get the European Track Championships uh, out of Belarus? Well, the steps that we've taken recently, uh, I've mentioned that uh, it's uh, the, uh, letters to the European Broadcasting Union, to the TISO, the sponsor of the company, uh, to the MEPs. Well, the next moves, in a nutshell, well, by and large, we are in conversations with the uh, national sports uh, cycling federations of Europe. We try to uh, get their attention and understanding. We need them to speak out and say that they are prepared to, to act as an alternative in country, as an alternative premises uh, to host the event. Uh, but uh, we will not disclose uh, the next steps uh, in public right now. But let me assure you that uh, the work is going on from many directions. Uh, the same, uh, same uh, 
person asking the question, Jonathan Craig, Deutsche Welle, uh, has the BSSF received any positive feedback from the national cycling federations of Europe? Well, right now, let me put it this way. For personal contacts, uh, the information is there. We have had feedback uh, personally. The European press, and even after the first appeals of ours to the European Cycling Union, the Swiss Federation uh, spoke out uh, saying that uh, they are considering boycott, uh, boycotting the uh, championship if, uh, unless it's moved uh, out of Belarus. And also it was mentioned in the Russian Federation in the public press. Well, I'm not sure about the Russian bits, uh, apologies. Uh, so there is discussion going on uh, for this in other federations. Colleagues, any further questions to the speakers? Yes, Nastya Losic, uh, good afternoon. A question to Anatoly Kotov. Could you please tell in more detail about your appeal to the producers of tobacco products? Uh, if, uh, if it's not about uh, seizing cooperation, the cessation of cooperation with Belarusian companies, so what exactly the NAM believes they should do? Uh, hello, and thank you for the question. We give the information as to what's going on in Belarus with respect to cigarette trade. We provide that information. Where the money from the legal trade is going and the volumes of illegal trade, of illicit products, particularly the cigarette brands which are made in Belarus under the license of international uh, tobacco manufacturers. Next, uh, each company has its own internal rules. Uh, some run an ethics code, some are uh, members of international alliances with fairly stringent uh, fair play rules, decent business rules, particularly the partnership. So these are the two elements uh, coming kind of right. First of all, it's inadmissibility of workers' rights violation, inadmissibility of legal trade. These are the two uh, red flags for each uh, international tobacco manufacturer. Uh, however, each one of these companies will draw conclusions for itself, how strongly they value their international uh, reputation or whether they would like to pursue this uh, short-term profit from placing the contract, contract manufacturing in Belarus. We will not impose any one-way uh, decisions. However, the facts uh, go to say that if, if something is black, there's no way of converting it into white just by saying it's white. And each, each company is supposed to draw conclusions for, for itself. Uh, there is an indicative case of Yara in this uh, respect. Uh, there's lengthy negotiations with Belarus Kali going on. Uh, Yara does not want uh, to abandon the Belarusian market. Well, it's particularly because of that. Uh, the, uh, the staff is not uh, being oppressed. Uh, the miners in Belarus are not being oppressed as strongly as they would have if not for Yara's involvement. Uh, so we continue to work in, in the same direction only with the top uh, tobacco manufacturers. Thank you. Any further questions, dear colleagues? Пожалуйста, если хотите, поднимайте руку. Если хотите, if you want to use your voice uh, and unmute your microphone, raise a hand. We will unmute you, and uh, you'll be able to uh, voice a question. Russian or English. Okay, I believe we we'll give it another minute. Uh, unless there are any further questions, we will wrap this uh, press conference up for today. Yeah, there's a question. Sergei Satsuk, uh, 
A question to Alexander Gerasimene. Are you going to get in touch with the investigative committee, uh, through lawyers, for example, through attorneys or, uh, for your criminal case? We will not challenge it. It's a completely useless point. Uh, it's a completely illegitimate case. The only thing is uh, we're going to require the results. Uh, so we're going to require uh, the resolutions uh, to initiate criminal probes. That's that's the only thing we're going to, we're going to that's the only thing we intend at this point. Looking forward to the questions, colleagues. Feel free to ask them. All right, there's a question from Lucas Katilos to Alexander Gerasimene. So, for you as an athlete, so for you as an athlete, are you somehow disappointed that Belarus uh, has been excluded from this prestigious sports event as the World Ice Hockey Championship? We all understand that any competitions, international tournaments that are going to be held or are already held in Belarus, this is, this is completely unethical at this time. It is, it is kind of like a feast on the bones. We understand that people need freedom. They want to be able to breathe the fresh air and not spend their time to fight for their rights or return the tournaments, uh, which are definitely not happening at, at the timely fashion. Me as an athlete, uh, I, I definitely understand, and I, I'm afraid for the athletes' right, as athletes rights. Understanding the training it took, the psychological, the human part that it took to prepare for the tournament. I know the feedback. I know that the people who are preparing for tournaments right now, they're still anxious. They're still very unhappy about stuff going on in Belarus. They cannot focus on trainings. They, can, they cannot uh, reach their peak form. And un until this uh, bad situation in country is there, the sports are not going to do any, uh, to, to yield any results. So it's kind of like uh, soldiers that are doing their job. It's not the case. Each each athlete uh, is uh, is a, a master, is a creator. Uh, they need inspiration and they need freedom. There's no freedom and no inspiration in the country at this time. So no tournaments, no competitions will get them inspired. It will get them to reach their peak form and uh, get good results. So we're definitely uh, we're, we're definitely not afraid of that and we, we, we understand that this, this is not timely right now these, these events are not, not, not happening at the right time uh, Skulavets from Belset, the question to Alexandra earlier uh, you personally said that the Belarusians uh, are going to wave at the neutral flag uh, at the Olympics uh, can you talk about this in more detail what the foundation is doing Yes, uh, we have been saying that probably the sanctions uh, that the IOC has applied uh, against the NOC are not finite. There could be more. Uh, the uh, re-elections at the National Olympic Committee, uh, as, uh, since the National Olympic, uh, since the NOC of Belarus did not comply uh, essentially with the requirements of the IOC, it was just a formal attempt to comply. Uh, the new round of sanctions, most stringent sanctions, will follow shortly. Possibly after the criminal case that was launched against us, uh, this will also be a trigger. This will also cause the IOC to respond appropriately. Because like I said, uh, this criminal case being launched, it's not against us as individuals. It's the criminal cases against us uh, as the foundation, uh, which is an entity in the Olympic movement. And there is a probability that our athletes are going to go, to, going to be able to go to the Olympics uh, without the national flag. We're waving the neutral flag. 
uh, like I said, we, we don't have this idea, we don't have this uh, intention or, the, or desire to deprive them of the right uh, to participate under the national flag. Uh, but the sanctions of the IOC are theirs to pay. It's the IOC who decide how, how, how strictly the, how, how strict the sanctions should be. There's no involvement that we have in this. We can only uh, provide more materials, produce more proof uh, of violations, and uh, require or ask or demand any sanctions. This, this is beyond our authority. This is beyond our mandate. We're not going to do that. Thank you. Colleagues, any further questions? Uh, we're live on YouTube. Uh, let me check the channel. Maybe there are some questions out there. Let me go to that stream right now and see if there are any questions coming in. Don't seem to see anything. Okay, there don't seem to be any further questions. Uh, let us uh, again give it one more minute. Uh, if nothing comes up in that 60 seconds, so we'll wrap this up. Okay, there don't seem to be any further questions. Uh, thank you very much to the representatives of the foundation of the NAM. Uh, thank you for agreeing to be with us today to turn in and answer the questions uh, of the journalists and provide your statements. The video from this press conference, it is already available on YouTube and in, in Russian. It will be available in English uh, a bit later on today. Uh, thank you very much. Until next time, all the best.